I'm looking at uh, all these nice boxes and switches and vendor signs. And when you look at this, Dan, what does this mean to you when you see all these names on all these boxes? It says to me that these companies are actually investing in OpenFlow and it's nearing more and more commercial reality. Great. Now, when you ONF started a year ago, would we have seen a demo with this many different vendor names all over it? Probably not, I would say. So, there was an OpenFlow lab at Interop a year ago. Sure. I don't remember it being this big. in four years. They hadn't had any, yeah. any, any, any uh, Interop that lab. And there were um, a number of vendors, they weren't really interoperating, yeah. and they were almost all prototypes. Most of these are products, product level now, yeah. and they're interoperating. So we have more, more switch vendors, we have more yeah. controllers, and more applications. Yeah, last year I remember a lot of switches, and I remember the NEC programmable flow controller on hardware, and that was it. Yeah. If I'm looking at actual physical hardware switches, the hardware controllers, who are the hardware controllers now? Well, um, is, is, it, is it still essentially just NEC? Oh, and then there's Big Switch. Yeah. And that's it. And, well, uh, I'm not quite sure how to classify Liatis yet. Okay. They're a new company from France. Liatis. So it still looks to me like the, uh, the open flow controller plane is an area where there may or may not be room for more vendor participation, or is that an area where there may be risk? Because I, I see some vendors, whether it's uh, HP or otherwise, who are now baking that into their own proprietary solutions. I think the controller space, the software space in general above open flow is, is really ripe for innovation yeah. and for a lot of market entrants. Because we don't even know how to define the scope or limit the scope of a controller. It's control software. Yeah. But uh, we talk about the uh, so-called northbound API yeah. of the controller. We don't even know what latitude that is. We're talking about northbound. We don't know what's contained in a controller and what are apps or services on top of the controller. For example, look at the um, uh, some of the traffic engineering you'll see here. Look at some of the load balancing. Look at the topology discovery. Is that part of the controller or is it an app that runs on top of the controller? Look at floodlight around the corner. Yeah. That's kind of a bare bones controller from Big Switch, which makes a commercial controller. So it's an, it's a space that is still having a great deal of exciting experimentation. Sounds good. When you look at, uh, and I know we talked about this not that long ago, when you look at OpenFlow, you just talked about some of the potentials. What do you see as the as the challenges or potential barriers to adoption, if any, right now? Well, I think the vendors are trying to figure out what to build and the uh, enterprises are trying to figure out what to buy. They know it's going to help them. They haven't figured out exactly where. Yeah. And so I think the biggest question is what comes out first? So what does come out first? Everyone, ha everyone is first saying, okay, our switches are going to be open flow compatible. And then on top, they're saying, okay, our controller will, will do this or that. And then where's the, where's the middle ground? So we're looking at seeing where the, uh, where the use cases are strongest. So yeah. the large scale data centers. Yeah. Um, we're starting to see a lot of interest in carriers for enterprise services and in enterprises themselves to really lower their operating expense. Yeah. And so I think you're going to see a lot more automated configuration. Yeah. Um, all the things that, that take too much human effort right now and cost money and cause errors. Sure. And, and then the other thing that people are usually worried about whenever there's a new networking technology is uh, rip and replace. When you when you look at ONF and what you have to do with software-defined networking, is there a mantra to try and prevent rip and replace, or is rip and replace the only way forward for networks? No, this is actually one of the nicest radical changes in networking that it does not require rip and replace. Yeah. If you look at the HP announcement from February, they announced OpenFlow support on 16 families of switches with a free software download, yeah. stuff that's already in the field. You don't even have to take that stuff out of the field. You can deploy it one switch at a time. You can have part of the network being open to flow and part of it not, and they're orthogonal. And that allows you organic, gradual growth of the capability with existing equipment or with slow introduction of new equipment. Great. Now, I know you recently had the, the Open Networking Foundation, the, the conference, the summit. Uh, some things came out of that. Uh, there was uh, all kinds of interesting announcements. When you look at the next set of conferences and summits that you have, are there certain key milestones you're looking to achieve in terms of either consensus among vendors for a protocol or, or some other sort of larger direction? 
Well, I think we have consensus on the protocol, and that's being standardized, and we just issued a new version of that, uh, approved a new version of that. I think what we'll see over time is um, more commercial announcements from both the vendors and the service providers. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll have more um, citations of installations and enterprises you know, that we can quote, like NEC has two here today from sure. uh, uh, Genesis hosting in Chicago and right. uh, Nissan Express in Japan. We'll have uh, more enterprises that are willing to say, hey, I've done it, here it is, you can talk about me. Got it. Good. Uh, and then on the uh, risks of proprietary versus open, I know OpenFlow itself is, is an open protocol. There may or may not be some proprietary overlays that people try and do for control. How do you prevent any part of uh, the ONF's mission, whether it's OpenFlow or otherwise, from becoming proprietary lock-in? So, you know, we're all about open interfaces in an open marketplace. And we're trying to make sure that the protocol itself has enough of the basic features that it satisfies a large part of the market. And that the innovation takes place mostly in software and therefore is easily interchangeable. We're also doing a lot to promote interoperability between the existing implementations. So that gives customers confidence that if they have some equipment, they buy other equipment, it'll work together, and if they want to change one for another, it'll still work with what they have. So it's really about customer assurance. The market will ultimately decide how much it wants to go proprietary and how much it wants to go standard. It's mostly voted for standard. 